Yeah, I had a script and I saw I left it in my office, so this will be fun. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I remember the first thing is I was going to ask a couple of questions. One is how many of you have been to the CCS intranet site? Uh, where you know where those little C's are spinning and it says faculty copyright or it says copyright district copyright information no Who, who's been there not enough times but you have been there okay who's uh, has anybody done we have um, it's a great thing. Uh, I see, Grace, we have uh, these trainings. There's trainings online for faculty. And at two, if not three of them, are copyright. I've done them all. Um, <laughs> that's my qualifications. Um, so has anybody done those copyright trainings? Yeah, yeah. OK, so you know what I know. Uh, <laughs> but OK, so I just wanted to know what you. So some of you have never been to that website. And OK, so that's, that's a really important thing. And I think we'll do that at the end of, of, the, uh, of the session. Uh, or you can check it out on your own. But uh, those are kind of basic. You know, I am not, you know, it's the old story. I'm not a lawyer, and I don't pretend to be one on TV. And uh, uh, so what I'm going to, and the real document for the district is on our internet. And you can't miss it. They have little spinning things in front of it. But uh, there, I find it leaves a lot of questions. So that's what I want to kind of cover today. What happened to me was that uh, this summer, I don't know what you all did this summer, but last summer I was camping up in Canada in the North Woods, in the, in the Rockies with my husband, sleeping on a tent floor. I got back and um, I looked at my email about, waited about, you know, I had about three work, weeks worth when I got there. And there were these requests from Kelly, will someone teach a copyright workshop? We're going to have this prison, will someone do a copyright workshop? And of course, we, there had been three weeks for all the librarians to um, pitch in and say, yes, I'd like to do this. <laughs> and no, guess what? No one did. And here's the reason. Please don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> uh, because the, our experience is, uh, my personal experience is that in general, uh, faculty who have want to do something that might be kind of borderline, they don't come and ask me. They go to a staff member. And they go to the staff person and they say, do this for me, please. And the staff member calls me. The staff member does not want to do whatever it is, you know. I won't be specific, but they don't want to do it. So they call me and they say, so and so has asked me to do this. Now, you know, is this is this right? Is this fair use? You know, and I, you know, and the last one I had involved uh, like three different really pretty pretty major abuses of copyright. So I told the staff person, no, I think you can tell that person that's not fair use, and and it's probably not. Uh, probably not a good use of your time to be <laughs> violate, you know, to be violating copyright law. But, so I got back an email, um, not directed to me, but, but, but the person CC'd me an email calling me a Nazi. I haven't had that since I dealt with teenage, teenage kids, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so what I wanted to do with this particular presentation is try to be the Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm of copyright and uh, tell you the things, concentrate on some of the things that you can do. And one of the things, I know it is confusing because in this world, um, we've got with the new virtual classrooms, there are all types of possibilities. Uh, it's created some new issues beyond just the paper and the books and the articles. And you're going to want to use videos. You're all creative people. Hopefully, you're going to want to use videos and music and pictures that you find on the web and maybe even in print and create your own multimedia teaching resources. And even better, you probably want to assign your, isn't a bad idea to assign your students to do some of these things too, right? And create their presentations. So what are the what are the limitations it is it is very very confusing uh, to a lot of people one of the
first basic things, I think, is remembering um, to s when you do use something, this is sort of part of, I went to a big workshop on visual literacy, which is explaining to students um, when they see a picture, when they see something, when they're using a picture, uh, it's important how that picture was created, how that image was created, and who, um, who is responsible for that image. So one of the things that you can always do is set a good example for your students by um, identifying what you're using the source and crediting the user. In this particular case, and for this presentation, I currently I try to use a lot of Wikimedia Commons pictures because uh, they tell you exactly how you need to attribute it. And so with my maze, it told me that I did need to credit the author, but I'm free to share, to remix, and to adopt the work. So that makes, that makes life a little simpler if you know what the rules are. Um, everything that you find on the web, on a web page, anywhere you look, that someone put up there, every image, Everything is basically it's copyright. Even if it's yours and you put it up, you copyrighted it without sending in the paperwork. You know, it's that the basic line is that everything is is considered copyright. So, unless otherwise indicated. So, if if you want to help things out, you might want to put one of those CC um, the common uh, <coughs> the copyright commons on yours. Uh, gui and guidelines, uh, wait, there's no clear set of guidelines. No, um, copyright is, you know, the, how our laws are done, is, you know, it goes beyond just that someone set, sets a copyright policy out there, which, you know, we, ha we have them, we have policies, but um, it's tested in the courts, right? So we don't exactly know what's legal until we get sued and it gets settled in, in a court of law, right? And then, hey, it gets appealed, <laughs> or it doesn't get appealed. So we're relying on case law. There's, there's, you know, the copyright law did not specify every little guideline. And that's one reason why we have those, uh, those little hints. Um, when you use material that you find on the internet, if you just simply link to the site, rather than trying to upload it or copy it, you're always good. You can always link to the site. There is no problem with that because if the person who authored that site doesn't want you to use it, what can they do? Take it down. They can, if they don't want people using their site, they can take it down. So you know, it, you can if you if it's a colleague or it's another university, you can send them a note and say, hey, we're going to link to you. It's thanks so much. We love this. You know, it's a nice thing to do, but as long as it's out there, you can link to it. Um, before, you can also ask permission. Um, so before you uh, start copying or uploading, if you see a YouTube uh, video that you'd love to have for your class, you're afraid it's going to disappear because they do, YouTube does tend to disappear. Look in it, find out who, see if you can figure out, do a little detective work, figure out who put it up there, and send them an email or, and ask them if, say, how much you love it and that you'd like permission to upload it to use for your class. And they may, there's a good chance they'll say yes. Actually taking a YouTube video and using it quarter after quarter and making it part of your own teaching instrument, it's, it's not exactly kosher. Now, you know, are the copyright police going to come in and police it? You know, and, it, and in some ways you could, ar you could make the argument that you're transforming it into a teaching tool. But, <laughs> okay, so, uh, so you can link to web, and in answer to your question, yeah, I, I noticed that too because I have the same capability in my library guides and I've done that too. And actually, what we should probably do is we should probably write, you know, if we can figure out who it is and send an email to them and say, hey, we'd really like to embed this. We're, we're going to embed this in our course. You know, it's always legal. It's always considered pretty legal if you do it just for a short time. You're really taking someone else's stuff. Yeah. But on the other hand, they put it out on the web for you to find, right? 
but if they take it down, you've still got it. Well, just think of it like that. It's like if you put out something on the web, let's say you put out a paper that you wrote for your students, but you didn't mind if anyone else found it, right? But then you went back and you read that paper and some things had changed and you didn't like it anymore. So you took it down so your students wouldn't have it, but someone else had copied it and was still using it. How would you feel? It's that same kind of situation. And, and, what, what, and isn't that paper yours? And did they ask you if they could put it and use it with their students? No. So it's, it's the same. Yeah. If you link to it, it's fine. You can link to anything. Yeah, linking is never a problem. Oop. Okay. Um, so linking is never a problem. Uh, you can, we in the library, we have a number of databases with articles in them, all kinds of, you know, magazine and journal articles. Anything that's in the library, you can link to, you can link to our full text articles. Uh, you can, we ha we're buying more and more reference ebooks. You can link, with, they all come with special things so that you can link to specific articles. You don't have to link to a whole book. You can link to an article or you can link to a book, uh, an ebook, no problem there. Uh, we have begun to purchase, and we, but it's expensive proposition, but we're purchasing digital <laughs> videos now. So if you want to have a video and you're teaching online and you need to show that video to everyone, we need to license that video and get a digital copy from whoever the copyright holder is. So um, we have a number of things. And I also have, um, there's also a lot of open source material. I, of course, my page didn't look quite the way I wanted. I've got to get it up here. But if, and I did a little reading about this. OK, so let's say that we said, OK, all, only our students can sign in to Canvas, OK? So therefore, we're, it's just like we're showing it in the classroom, right? Well, except there's one little problem. If those students, when they're probably pretty, some of them are probably pretty resourceful, can figure out a way to upload that video to there, unless we have a way that, uh, from what I read, unless we have a way to absolutely make sure that no one who sees that video in your canvas can start pulling off parts of it. And I, I have, oh, Rick was here. He, I should have asked him. But I don't think we have that technology yet. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. So if we if if there's a you know if there's a way to keep anybody keep it in in the class then you then you could make a case that you could do it. But but um, uploading videos is a big big digital content is a big big no no. Now if you have let's say that you have an article that you want uh, there's also. Um, um, the open source stuff, government documents, and um, I got uh, the Human Services uh, Department contacting me this summer, and they're going to be using heavily um, government documents from uh, the uh, NIDA, the uh, National Alcoholic and, and Drug Abuse people. Anyway, they have all these different um, documents. You know, maybe there's some, of course, they're not technical enough probably for you in. Um, physical therapy, but if there's, you know, free, if there's free things from the National Library of Medicine, any of those government documents, and it, there's a lot of medical articles, and they're getting to be more and more. The government is working on our side. They are for us because they're trying, they've, since um, recently, the last couple of years, they've put that anybody who takes federal funds for research, and this is getting argued out too, and I'm sure it'll be settled in the courts, don't you think? But people are saying that if you, if a, someone took federal funds for research, that it should be an open document, that it should be available to us all because they use federal funds. Now, the medical researchers are not real happy about that. <laughs> so we'll see how that falls out. But so if you can get a do government document, um, we have something called e reserves. We don't have very many of them. Who's heard of the Copyright Clearinghouse before? Oh, that's me. Okay. So there is a Copyright Clearinghouse. So if, let's say that you have an article and you're teaching online and you want everyone in your class to read this article. The first thing is spontaneous use. If, 
if you just happen to find that, you know, it just ran in your professional journal last week. And so obviously you couldn't have known about it ahead of time. You can, for one quarter, you could use that journal article with your class because it's spontaneous, you, or you could make a case, I'll just say you could make a case for using it because it's spontaneous use. You, how could you have planned that? You know, it just ran and you're only gonna use it one quarter, you know, right now. Then you're gonna make arrangements and the arrangements you're gonna make uh, if you have something you absolutely have to use is there's something called the Copyright Clearinghouse and we can put up e-reserves. And e-reserves means that we license that content. And that's the only way we can legally get digital copies of things we don't own and use them quarter after quarter after quarter. It is very expensive. So you don't hear us running around telling you all, oh, let's all do e-reserves. E, uh, uh, Jeanette Caritian just retired, and she had a Calliope's sister for probably, what, 15 years? We must have paid hundreds of, I bet we, <laughs> over the years we paid, uh, we paid, every year we paid a license fee to keep that article for the quarter that she used it with her students. It was like a 20-page article. First we had the paper copy, on reserve, paid for that, because we didn't own it. Then we licensed it to scan it and have students be able to read it. Okay, so it's an expensive deal. Um, so, but it can be, if there is something that you have to use quarter after quarter, that is the legal way to do it. Um, I have on a, your sheet the Copyright Clearinghouse, it's really easy, copyright.com. You can take any article that you use and you can put the information in and look it up and you can go through sticker shock and see how much it's going to cost to, you know, and they do it by how number of students in your class and how many quarters you're using it and all that. But there's a cost, there's a cost to it. Okay. And of course the creative commons uh, licensing, do this, you know, do this for your own things, get your students to use creative commons so that those are things that can be shared. You, there's various uh, types of licenses that you can use. Okay, now, if you receive permission, I mean, this is stupid, but if you receive permission, keep a copy for your records. There was a bad incident at SCC, and I don't wanna go into details, but it, I heard it involved music, and you know, there's things now that go out on the web, and this was something, uh, in a promotional for a program, and they thought they had licensed it uh, correctly, but uh, maybe the paperwork wasn't quite in order, and the paperwork didn't quite show that they had the rights. You know, I don't know, but anyway, um, they ended up paying less money than the original. I think they were, they approached them with UOS tens of thousands of dollars, and they settled for too much, but you know, they had to settle it. So, uh, so if you have permission, make sure you know where it is. You know, if you retire, pass it on to someone else. <laughs> well, I, I mean, if you get permission, like we, I, I wrote um, for the, again, for human services, they had some DVDs we bought and they wanted to put them up on the web and, and Rick helped me. But uh, they, but we wrote and we got that we wrote the publisher and they happened to be a really they weren't commercial, so they were educational publisher. They wanted the information out and they gave me a written, a written you know thing that says we can we can digitize those and use them you know well, forever. Oh yeah, you'd want it to say forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in perpetuity for the <laughs> yes yeah yeah that would be nice you know but at least that you have permission to use it uh, okay so there are some when you have your students doing those um, kinds of projects there's some things you can do without permissions Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm there's some things you can do um, images it's a little bit fuzzy oh we got a we've got a photographer here but I, what I always take from the images thing is like if you have a big book of uh, Greg Ross photography and he's got a hundred pages of photos in there that maybe you could use 10% or five photos, whichever is less, and you don't really have to 
because it's just a small amount of his oh, big o major opus, right? So you're going to let him use. Yeah, yeah. So uh, film, you can, for, for an example, in a class or students can use uh, in a project, you could use three minutes of a film without any to illustrate a point for educational purposes without getting any permissions, or 10%. It's a really long film, Gone with the Wind. <laughs> so, uh, text is, again, they go 10% or 1,000 words. And then there's this big, I didn't write it down here, but there's this big, unless it's a poem. You know, because a poem, 1,000 words would be the whole poem. So you're, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to just use a little you know, stanza of a poem or something. Um, and for music, you've, you've all, have you've all heard those videos, right, with the music where it snaps from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, and you know why that is, because you can use 30 seconds. It's generally, it's a percent or about 30, it comes down to about 30 seconds. And uh, so if they just use 30 seconds and then 30 seconds of something else and then 30 seconds of something else and then 30 seconds of something else, then you can have some music in your, in your show. Yeah. There's also some free music sites that um, let you do things if you need uh, free music for your... Okay, so be advised. Courts are not bound by established standards or guidelines, and the Copyright Act contains no such standards. So this is where the CCS checklist comes in, and it sounds like a lot of you haven't seen that checklist. That I'll, I'll pull it up here in a second. Um, so what you would want to do is you'd want to go um, to the checklist. You'd want to inform yourself about the rules. You'd want to, if you think that something you're going to use is fair use, then you want to fill out the checklist form. Honest, you go through, fill it out honestly, sign it, date it, and keep it for your record so that if the copyright police should come and say, we found this on the web, uh, this isn't fair, you would have some documentation as to why you used it and the reasons that you thought it was fair and you didn't just make it up yesterday. Okay, so I've got a copyright page and on your on your sheet here there's a which has all these um, different websites and it's live guides not libraries so that kind of you, Spokane Falls EDU copyrights got a lot of the information and where I got my information. So I just want to real quickly, for if there aren't any burning questions, for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, this is the college's intranet page. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, this is the college's intranet page. And um, the copyright uh, policies and procedures are here. And they also refer you to uh, a site in, in the University of Minnesota for some basic, there's a special thing for faculty, and they're all, you know, noticeably vague because that's just kind of the way things are. And, but they do have the checklist. So once you understand basic copyright, then you're kind of, you're ready to use the checklist. Again, let me go back. And the checklist doesn't make sense unless you've read the basic rules. But uh, you go through, you know, uh, and yes, no. And so if you have, if you have a whole bunch of, of um, wrong answers on these, you know, a lot of schools have these where, where the, it's obvious which answer you're supposed to, supposed to use. But, um, you know, teaching includes multiple copies, you know, uh, that, uh, that's not, uh, teaching including multiple copies for classroom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the purpose is, you know, but if you're, obviously you're not doing commercial activity, you're not prophesying, it's not entertainment, you know, all that, that's pretty obvious, but, uh, is it a published work? No, you, no or yes. You know, so um, 
so you can check through this and then you know you should you know keep keep it for your re if you go through this and everything that seems to be favoring or most of the things seem to be uh, saying yes this is probably fair use then keep that for your record. Thank you. Right, thank you.